This is the second of three videos covering notes payable and accounting transactions as they relate to uh, notes payable. In this video, I'm going to walk you through this right down here, recording an adjusting entry for accrued interest as a result of a note payable spanning to spanning the end of a fiscal year and into a second uh, fiscal year. We talked already about recording the liability, so I'm assuming you know how to do that. Uh, a lot of people get confused when we talk about accruing interest. They either forget don't that we have to do this. Maybe they don't even understand why we need to accrue interest. I'm just going to take you back briefly. Remember, a note payable is something that uh, we have an obligation to fulfill, repay a bank possibly, within one year. And so if we look at our example, I'm just going to go back here, we have entered into a note payable, and I've got that represented right here. We have increased our, our liability, our obligation to pay our credit union for $5,000. And the, the terms of our, of our note were that we would enter or issue the note on November 1st. There's an annual interest rate of 8% and we'll repay that note in five months. The issue and the reason that we have to journalize an adjusting entry is because, and I've tried to lay it out right here, look at here's our first month, second month, third month, fourth month, and fifth month. At the end of March we're going to have to repay the credit union for the money that we borrowed. The issue we have, and you can see differentiated by the colors is we've spanned two different accounting periods with this note. As a result, part of the interest on the note is attributable to this year, 2011, and then uh, the remaining portion of the interest is related to 2012. So if we wait till maturity date to record all of the interest we're misleading the users of the financial statements and telling them that all of the interest is attributable to this year. It's misleading. So we have to break it up. We're splitting that interest in essence and putting it into the right bucket, into the right fiscal year. So let's go ahead and do that. I've drawn my farmer here in the credit union. I always like to go back to the essence of the transaction. What did we give? We're the farmer. And what did we receive? Well, initially we gave our promise and received cash, but at this point, for the adjusting journal entry, what did we give the credit union and what did they receive? This will help us construct the journal entry. We gave, again, another promise to the credit union. And in return, they said, okay, we're not going to call your note yet. You still have more time. You get the use of that note for an extended period and we're going to call that interest expense. They let us use the money for a fee so we gave them a promise and in return we were able to use the money. So how does that look from from an accounting perspective? We gave a promise which is an obligation, a liability that we're going to repay not the note. This is different from the $5,000. We're going to pay them some interest. So we have increased our obligation for interest payable. What did we receive in, in return? We received the use of the money. I don't have that written in here, so let's just write it quick. That's interest. It's an expense. Expense follows this rule we have then increased our expense for the year of 2011. So we're going to assume that Farmer Fish follows a calendar year as his fiscal year and now we're going to have to debit interest expense credit interest payable. That's the adjusting journal entry. If you remember the rules of an adjusting journal entry you will affect two things. A balance sheet account right here that's the liability and an income statement account that's this interest expense right here so we followed that rule we have a debit we have a credit now the next question and this is where a lot of people get confused or go uh, and, and calculate incorrectly is the amount of this interest it's only two-fifths 
of the total amount of the interest we have to pay on the note. So let's just calculate that real quickly. Uh, I got some space up here. So the face amount of the note, $5,000. The interest rate, 8%. That works out to $400. This is where most people get confused. This is annually. This would be for 12 months. Guess what? We only want to represent two months. Because there were two months in 2011 that we used the, the note. So we're going to multiply that by two twelfths. Doesn't give us a nice even number, but it works. Gives us $66.00. 67 cents. So in the year of 2011, we need to reflect in our financial records that we used interest of $66.67. That's the adjusting journal entry. So let's go down here and construct that journal entry. The date, since it's the end of the calendar and fiscal year, we use 1231, December 31st, and we always put a debit first in a proper format of a journal entry, so we're going to debit interest expense. We've talked about that above. Interest expense, and we're going to do that in the amount of $66.67. For every debit, we have to have a credit, and we are going to credit interest payable. We've increased the amount we're going to promise to pay the bank by the same amount. Interest payable. $66.67. That's it. That's the journal entry. It's very simple journal entry. Once you understand the concept and the, and the mathematics behind calculating the interest. So in essence what we've told our financial users is we now have another short-term obligation to pay a creditor. So not only do we have $5,000 we owe, we have an additional $66.67 that we're going to have to repay in the near term uh, as a result of an obligation we've entered. And that would tell an investor or a banker, again, an indication of liquidity uh, as it relates to their, their financial health.